Right. Um, what is the uh, human, nat human and nature uh, relation? Uh, obviously, there are many uh, details. Some people would say we are uh, given the environment for our own benefit, so we have dominion over it. And um, many believe that we should be the stewards of the environment to protect it, to exploit it in a sustainable way, and take care of the other species along with us, and so on and so forth. Um, this is one of the author's kid uh, marching for science. So there is always this uh, tussle between uh, what science means in the context of religion. Not everybody does science, but also not everybody does religion, but religion is a broad uh, human concept. There are nice ideas as to how God and religion would have evolved, but religion uh, in general has had something to say about uh, Mother Nature, our role in it, uh, how we are supposed to exploit it, and so on and so forth. All these things become important because many times the cultural mores and the cultural values are imbibed indirectly and implicitly through what is passed down historically based on uh, religious tenets, if you will. Okay, Very broad statement, but nonetheless. <clears throat> and then there is the other idea of uh, deciding who owns resources, who owns lands, and uh, where can we uh, harm the environment. Okay, this nice book about the uranium mining in Navajo country uh, talks about, b by Tracy Brin, or Tracy Brin Voiles, uh, talks about the concept of waste landing. What does that mean? Basically, you decide that some people are uh, somehow okay to live in uh, exploited land. Okay, so in Wasteland, she tells the history of Uranian in the uranium industry on Navajo land in the U.S. Southwest. Asks why certain landscapes and peoples who inhabit them come to be targeted for disproportionate exposure to environmental harm, and argues that presence of uranium uh, mining on Dine Navajo land constitutes a clear case of environmental racism. Okay, this happens obviously a lot, not just about mining, but where are nuclear plants put in, where are uh, coal burning plants are put in. You can go in California and find one place has almost all of the energy plants where the pollution is very high compared to just nearby regions. Uh, we talked about China taking over the manufacturing of the world and imposing on themselves the pollution of the world. Uh, you, you know that uh, the wastewater treatment plants uh, and other kind of waste disposal landfills are put in certain places where people don't have the wherewithal to fight against them. So these are called environmental racism. Obviously when you put supercharged words it can create controversy but nonetheless. In 2011 United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon delivered an address to the General Assembly of the UN and he essentially uh, echoed the same message, saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth. These are one and the same fight. Okay, that's important. Lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth, and saving our planet. They are not, they cannot be separated. We live within the planet, everything happens within the environment. Herman Daly, the economist from the University of Maryland, has talked about similar ideas where Thinking of economy as something that is outside of the environment and sustainability can lead to very uh, different outcomes than if you just thought of economy as something that affects the environment and is within the environment and has to worry about transforming natural resources irreversibly into unrecyclable junk. <coughs> Okay, so those are the same ideas. We must connect the dots between climate change, water scarcity, energy shortage, global health, food scarcity, and women's empowerment. As we said, where 
countries where women are in political power, the environmental footprint, uh, environmental harm tends to be lower. Solutions to one problem must be solutions to all. Okay, this is something that we will uh, go through again and again. Just to give an example, the most well-known biblical statement of human dominion over nature can be found in Genesis uh, 1. 28 be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it fill the earth and subdue it <clears throat> obviously this comes from a time when there were very few people running around and it was impossible to imagine that population would grow to a level where we would in fact end up subduing it without any religious ordain to do it have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on earth. That sounds rather um, domineering. Nonetheless, these things have affected the cultural values along the way. The idea of uh, terra nullius came along. This is the Garden of Plenty, Garden of Eden. You can see the uh, uh, portrayal uh, as abundance and terra nullius which came out in the uh, 1680s I think by John Locke defined the concept of property where he said if a land is not occupied and not being exploited by somebody else you can claim it and it becomes your property and then came the idea of fencing it as we will see and dividing the land into pieces which create numerous problems numerous problems okay so religion has something to say and we'll see some statements from Quran and the Buddhist philosophy and see that it's not always the same uh, and even the modern Christians are now beginning to uh, consider uh, environmental stewardship as opposed to dominion over the environment as something that is within good Christianity so it's why we looked at papal encyclical before which talked about climate change and its impacts on poverty and injustice racism etc pretty much everywhere uh, whether it's African Americans in the US or Africans in Africa or poor people in Asia or poor people in the US this inequity of environmental impact uh, on health food access water access or quality or a quantity continues